Hello and welcome to this scratch tutorial and today we're going to make a game uh, based on jumping over a hurdle. So I've got scratch the cat here but nothing else so far. So I'm going to start off by making a new sprite that's going to be my hurdle. And to start off with I'm just going to paint a new sprite and I'm going to make it very simple. I'm just going to draw a shape, just a box shape. I'm going to fill it in like so, and I'm going to make sure the centre of the shape is in the centre of the sprite, like so. Okay. Now, I've got scratch, I've got my obstacle. It's quite a big obstacle, so I'm going to use the shrink tool to shrink it down a little bit. That's a bit better. Okay. Now, the idea is that this obstacle is going to come across the screen and it's going to travel along and you've got to jump over that obstacle. So let's go to Scratch the Cat and let's get him to jump first. So we're going to go to his scripts and I'm going to use the space key. So when the space key is pressed, I want to jump up and then jump back down. So his starting position, when we click go, is where he is at the moment. So that's at minus one zero. And I'm going to get a glide to that position as well. I'm going to use that later on. I need him to jump clear of the box. So I'm going to go to there. And I'm going to grab a block there. You'll notice when I moved Scratch, it changed the values to where he was. Now I'm just going to change this to minus one as well. That means he'll stay on the same value in the x-axis. So when he jumps up, we're expecting him to go up and then back down. Let's try it. He goes up and down. Okay. Up and down. Each time I press spacebar, up and then down. Brilliant. Okay. Next thing then, let's try and get this red box to move across the screen. So I'm going to start it as far over here as I can. Okay. And then I'm going to say, right, when I click go, go to that position. So you're going to start off at those coordinates and then he's going to start moving by changing the x position. Now we want him to go from right to left so that's a minus like so and we want it to keep doing that forever. Just keep moving left. Okay so if I just check that now brilliant moves across the screen. Reset it moves across the screen but when it gets to the edge of the screen it stops I want it to come back to the start and loop back around so we can keep trying to jump the box so I'm going to need for this I'm going to need to get when we click go forever if now what I want to see is if we're on the edge of the screen I want it to reappear back where it started so I need to know its coordinates I need to know at what point is it here. So if I click on the eye, it will tell me its current coordinates and we're on x minus 281. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this less than block. And we're going to say right if, and if we go into motion, we can get if their x position is ever less than minus, let's say, 275. Okay, so we know that at the moment it's minus 281, so that would be true. It's less than minus 275. If it's ever less than minus 275, then I'm going to get it to go to that, that block there. Okay, let's test that. Let's see if I've made any errors or if that works. Brilliant. So we can see that it's now looping around. Fantastic. In fact, we can play a sort of early version of our game where I can try and jump, oh, too slow, out of the way. Now that's re revealed a problem. Scratch is moving much too slowly for me to be able to jump out of the way effectively. It's quite difficult to keep going. So let's go back to Scratch and let's try and adjust that so he moves a little bit quicker for me. So instead of taking one second to glide, I'm going to say 0.5 seconds. And to make it fair, I'll change that as well. Let's see if this works. 
So now when I try and jump, he's much quicker. But actually, I'm still coming down too quickly. So let's change that back to one second. And we'll try again. So here we go. That's pretty good. I think we're just a little bit too quick coming down still. Well, what I'm going to do in fact, is I'm going to reduce the size of the block. Now that might spoil some of my code. It has because I've changed the value here. So what's the... it now only goes to minus 270, so we need to change that to minus 265. Okay. So let's try it now. Let's try starting again. And let's see if we can... Oh, I've made an error here. I think I've left a gap in here and it didn't like it. There we go. So let's... Oh, I've done it again. I've put the gap back in. Okay. So let's try and jump the block. That's a little bit more doable, isn't it? Okay. So... That's great, but we've got a small problem because scratch the cat and the block can run into each other and nothing happens. So we want to do another check to see if the two are running into each other. So I'm going to go back to Scratch's code and I'm going to get another, when I click go, forever, if block. So this is another thing that's going to keep checking over and over and over again. And we want to know if they're ever touching. So we go, if they're ever touching... So we're saying, is Scratch ever touching Sprite 2, which is our block? If it is, then we want to do something about it. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to change the backdrop to something else. So if I go to Looks, I can get Switch Backdrop 2. At the moment, I've only got Backdrop 1, but I'm going to make another backdrop now. And to do that, I'm going to click on the backdrop. I'm going to choose the backdrops and I'm going to paint a new one. So I'm very quickly going to make uh, a red. No, I'm not going to make it red. I'm going to make it yellow. And it's going to say game over on it. Okay. So there you go. It says game over on it now. So this is my game over screen. This is my normal play screen. So I could change the colour of this one as well if I wanted, so I could have a, a lovely green backdrop. There we go. Now, if I go back to my scripts and back to Scratch, when it touches Sprite 2, we're going to say Backdrop 2. I'm also going to send a broadcast. And I'm going to broadcast uh, a message called End. And End is going to be sent to this block and if it ever receives end then it's going to hide okay let's just test what we've just done there right see if that works so I jump the first one I jump the second one right let's get a hit oh game over okay so it hid but now if I restart the game it doesn't work I'm clicking on go but nothing's restarting there's a couple of things that I haven't done Okay, first thing I haven't done is I haven't shown him. I've hidden him when the game ended, but I haven't shown him when the game started again. So we need to show him again, but also the backdrop hasn't changed back. So when I click go, I'd like to switch the backdrop to backdrop one. Okay, let's see if that's going to work. Oh, wasn't, wasn't quick enough there, but yeah, it definitely restarted the game, didn't it? Okay. So, this is pretty good, uh, and I've got something like a working game here, pretty simple, and obviously there are lots of ways that we could improve it. For example, I could get Scratch to hide when he receives the end code, so I could say when I receive end, Scratch is going to hide. Must make sure to show him at the start as well. Okay, but there are lots of other ways I could improve it. So I might say I'm going to add a variable to count the number of times I jump over, or I might add a variable to speed it up. Check out one of my other videos, and I'll see what else I can do with this game. Thanks for watching.